So I am pleased to inform everyone that Seattle has been liberated. The Capitol Hill Autonomous Zone, otherwise known as CHAZ, I think they switched their name to CHOP, but I'm told they went back to CHAZ, uh, was a failed four-week Democrat experiment by the radical left, and the results are in. Anarchy is anti-American. Law and order is essential. Peace in our streets will be secured. While the Democrat mayor of Seattle proclaimed that Chaz was to be, quote, the summer of love, in fact, it was not. And other failed Democrat politicians also remained passive or even silent in the face of anarchy. But while that happened, President Trump set the tone. Law and order must prevail to preserve peace in our streets. The president is not the Democrat governor of the state of Washington. The president is not the Democrat mayor of Seattle. But nevertheless, the president must lead by example and be prepared to act in the face of failed Democrat leadership, which is what we saw in Democrat Seattle and Democrat Wisconsin. President Trump has always stood on the side of law and order, and we are pleased to report that law and order has prevailed and Seattle has been liberated from the anarchist. In President Trump's America, autonomous zones will have no sanctuary. The BAZ, B-H-A-Z, which stood for the Black House Autonomous Zone across from the White House, was swiftly dismantled. 100 anarchists were arrested for rioting and destruction of federal property here in D.C. I believe that number is now above 300. Four men have been charged in federal court for attempting to tear down the statue of Andrew Jackson in Lafayette Square, and there are 200 open domestic terrorism investigations. You contrast the president's vision of law and order to that of the failed Chaz experiment in anarchy. And here's what you find in the failed Democrat experiment that took place out in Seattle. The Seattle Times said the shooting at Seattle's CHOP protest tragically killed a 16-year-old boy, uh, leaving a 14-year-old seriously injured. That's what happens in an autonomous zone. The police chief, Carmen Best, who did a marvelous job winding down the CHOP zone, uh, noted that CHOP has become lawless and brutal and enough is enough, and she took action. According to reports, quote, police also investigated several vehicles circling the CHOP zone with people inside carrying fire firearms and wearing body armor. This was no, quote, summer of love, as the Democrat mayor in Seattle said. And President Trump compelled action. Uh, he has said, take back your city now. If you don't do it, I will. He has said this is not a game. These ugly anarchists must be stopped immediately, move fast. And finally, the Democrat mayor in Seattle, who was long delayed, finally gave the order to dismantle the Chaz. Uh, and it was an admission. It was an admission that President Trump's vision is right, that anarchy is wrong, and that law and order bring peace. And with that, I'll take questions. Kristen. Well, thank you so much. National Security Advisor Robert O'Brien said that the intelligence about the alleged Russia plot was being taken so seriously that U.S. allies were alerted and that it could impact military tactics. So how is that a hoax? Well, as I mentioned yesterday, uh, what happens when any intelligence comes in unverified, if there is any uh, way that it could affect American troops or allies, it is immediately communicated um, on the ground to ensure that troops and commanders and generals can make the best decisions, tactically speaking. Uh, so that's the way it's done. Uh, but what I would say is, at the same time, until there's a strategic decision for the president to make, until it is verified, it is not briefed up to the president of the United States. That's how intelligence works. Is he angry or frustrated or upset about the fact that he was not in the loop on this when members of Congress were briefed and U.S. allies were briefed? No, the president um, believes that and has great faith in Ambassador O'Brien and the others who made the decision that this shouldn't be risen to his desk. Um, it was a career CIA officer um, with more than 30 years uh, a tenure who made the decision not to brief it up. And uh, the National Security Advisor agreed with that decision. She's an excellent officer and does great work um, and made the decision not to brief it up. It was the right decision to make. And at this moment, as I speak to you, it is still unverified. And Kaylee, this is all very quickly. I've heard you and Robert O'Brien and others express real outrage about the leaks. 
is there outrage about what the intelligence community is investigating, which is the possibility of these Russian bounties targeting U.S. troops? Make no mistake uh, that this administration has acted tough on Russia, always makes the decision that's in the best interest of protecting our troops, like killing General Soleimani, uh, who killed 600 American troops, maimed thousands others, and al-Baghdadi. We always act in the best interest of our troops. Um, but this is unverified still at this very moment. John. Kelly, why is the president calling Black Lives Matter a symbol of hate? Well, what the president um, was noting is that uh, that symbol, um, when you look at some of the things that have been chanted by Black Lives Matter, like pigs in a blanket, fry them like bacon, um, that's not an acceptable phrase to paint on our streets. Look, he agrees um, that all Black Lives Matter, including that of Officer David Dorn, Patrick Underwood, two officers whose lives were tragically taken amid these riots, all Black Lives do matter. He agrees with that sentiment. But what he doesn't agree with is an organization that chants pigs in a blanket, fry them like bacon about our police officers, our valiant heroes who are out on the street protecting us each and every day. Americans of all races have protested in all 50 states uh, around that phrase, Black Lives Matter. And the president is here calling it a symbol of hate? He's talking about the organization. Um, I would note to you that the Greater New York BLM president has said, if this country doesn't give us what we want, that we will burn down the system. And I could be speaking literally. I'd call that a pretty hateful statement. But, but Kelly, yes, Ben. He's talking about the organization in his tweet. He says yes, the words. Ben. He says the words. Which, Black Lives what's Matter. What's the name of the organization again? Black Lives Matter. There you go. You that, just the, answered the, my the, question. Go ahead, Ben. Question on coronavirus. Uh, earlier today, the president said, I think that at some point that's going to sort of just disappear, I hope. He's hoping that it will disappear, the president's strategy at this point? No, the president's confident that it'll disappear. He's confident that he's put together a revolutionary, first-class team that is going to break through bureaucracy and get us a vaccine. Uh, he's confident that that will lead us to a place where we won't have uh, COVID on our hands. And in fact, there was very pleasing news today from Pfizer and BioNTech uh, that showed positive results for their vaccines. Dr. Fauci says that we're heading toward the 100,000 cases per day. So why does the president have evidence that it would just disappear? Well, one, between a vaccine and it just disappearing. One thing I would note um, with regard to cases, we're aware that there are embers in the country. We're aware that there are places with rising cases, and that's why Dr. Burks is on the ground and others. We're continually assessing that. But one thing I would note is just that when you do test more people, you do identify more cases, and that is rapidly ongoing. We're testing uh, more than a half a million a day. Um, to give you an example, on April 6th, really the height of the pandemic, we were doing um, 151,525 tests. Um, one day, you know, Thursday is the number that I have here. We conducted 637,587 tests. So when you have more than a five-fold increase in tests, you have a greater identification of cases. Do you consider what's happening in Florida, in Texas, in Arizona as embers? I would say that those are, we see rising cases, we see embers around the country. We always knew that would come with reopening, but uh, those who are t identifying as positive cases do tend to be younger individuals, as the vice president noted. And I think the increase in testing is part of uh, the contribution to what we're seeing. Yes. Um, today, Mayor Bowser said uh, her office is communicating with the Department of Interior about the 4th of July celebration. And it's not, in her mind, in keeping with CDC guidelines as well as D.C. Department of Health guidelines. The White House has said over and over again we should look to our local authorities for how we should act. Should the what should should the administration be following the local guidelines? The this? president has said that um, we should follow our local authorities with masks, so that's the decision uh, that he encourages people to follow those authorities. Um, the CDC guidelines, I'd also note, say recommended but not required. Um, and we are very much looking forward to the 4th of July uh, celebration. Yes. Are you, are you preparing some options for the president to consider uh, for retaliation against Russia should this intelligence prove to be true? And I won't get ahead of the president on action. I also won't get ahead of the intelligence, which at this moment is unverified. Does the president want this intelligence to be corroborated or not? Or, or I mean, what has he told his advisors on this front? Um, the president, it's unverified. It's being assessed. It's going through the same process um, normal intelligence would go through. But what's unfortunate is we're having this discussion because um, of the New York Times deciding to run with this and erroneous information about the president being briefed, which was not true, and the erroneous information that there was a conclusion when, in fact, there was not a conclusion. Jen? Uh, yeah, Kaylee, can you confirm that the CIA director and the NSA director will brief the congressional gang of eight tomorrow about the Russia bounties? Yes, that is the plan.
two of them. Anyone else that will be briefing the, the gang? Uh, I'm not entirely sure who else will be um, in that briefing. Say, does the president generally have confidence in the intelligence community's findings and conclusions about Russia? Yes, he does have confidence, and he's many times acted um, on verified intelligence. And um, there's times he's decided that it's in our strategic interest not to act. I'd give you the example of Soleimani and al-Baghdadi, and then the example of um, Iran shooting down um, the, the, when Iran engaged in actions, and the president said it's not time uh, to engage because um, shooting down um, a shooting down an entity is not the same as losing loss of civilian lives. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Kaylee. Shooting down a drone. Excuse me. Yes. The president has come under criticism this week for statements that he has made that his detractors say are dog whistles to a certain segment of his base that he is trying to gin up for, for re-election. Those include comments like Kung Flu, our heritage while talking about Confederate statues. And most recently, they include the video that I know you discussed in here the other day, but the video of a supporter of his uh, using the term white power. So why has it the president denounced that video and called that a hateful statement? The president took down that video. Um, that deletion speaks strongly. And what I would note, the president has repeatedly condemned hate. August of 2019, in one voice, our nation must condemn racism, bigotry, and white supremacy. These sinister ideologies must be defeated. Hate has no place in America. In April 2019, we have no tolerance for those who disrupt this peace, and we condemn all hate and violence, especially in our places of worship. August 2018, I condemn all types of racism. He's repeatedly done this. Uh, that specific video and said that that is hateful language that was used in it. He deleted it. The deletion speaks for itself. His repeated condemnations of hate speak for themselves. And uh, this is a president who's repeatedly condemned hate and repeatedly encouraged for us all to come together. Yes. Thank you, Kaylee. Did the president meet today with Senate Republican Leader McConnell about the future recovery aid package? And is there any sort of agreement on additional unemployment insurance or stimulus payments? Yeah, so I have no announcements with regard uh, to his meetings, but what I would say is he did mention that in a phase four, he would be open to direct payments um, on the point of unemployment insurance. Um, one thing that he's concerned about is he does not want to see an incentive not to work um, and enhanced unemployment uh, benefits that Senator Schumer has suggested uh, would be an incentive for people not to get back to work. And he wants to encourage uh, people to get back to work. And at the same time, he's mentioned a payroll tax holiday, a big win for our workers that helps those those who are on the lowest end of the payroll would help the Americans who need it most. So those are some things he's talked about for phase four. Yes. Hey, you use the word um, embers to describe the coronavirus, but yesterday another all-time record of 47,000 cases and, and four times this week a new record. Uh, why do you use the word embers when many people would say it's more like a wildfire? So I use the word embers because that is what the president has acknowledged that would happen around the country. You would see spikes across the country. Uh, he said at times you would see a fire across the country, embers, fires. Um, but at the same time, I would note the increase in cases, uh, that, or the increase in testing, you know, six-fold increase in testing. You identify more cases. I'd also note uh, that uh, Secretary Azar said that we've seen nationwide that fatalities at a two-month low. Uh, so this is a different situation when those who are testing positive are younger. Uh, we have increased tests. We're aware where there are, where there are surges. That's why Dr. Burks is on the ground. Um, but we believe we are equipped to handle what we see on the horizon. The president, made a, yes, the president made a conscious decision to talk less about the virus. You know, I think in his town hall with Sean Hannity, someone measured it. It was only three minutes that he discussed it. He, he tweets about it far less often than he used to. The president is not focused on talking. He's focused on action. And his administration has taken historic action with regard to the coronavirus. We have an excess amount of PPE surge at a huge amount of ventilators in the stockpile, things that could never be done, we were told, have been done under this administration, testing more than 600,000 a day. Uh, this president has done a historic job with regards to the coronavirus. Lilith. Thank you. President yesterday tweeted that he's angry against China. There's anger against China and India also. So India has banned 59 apps from China, including TikTok. Uh, how, how does the president know about it and what are his views on this? 
So with regard to India and China, um, we're closely monitoring the situation. He is as well. Both India and China have expressed a desire to de-escalate, and we support a peaceful resolution of the current situation. And he said that China's aggressive stance along the India-China border fits with a larger pattern of Chinese aggression in other parts of the world. And these actions only confirm the true nature of the Chinese Communist Party. TikTok. Um, India banning the TikTok app. No announcements on that. I would just point you to what Secretary Pompeo said earlier. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. What can we expect the president to weigh in on Israel's plan to annex parts of the West Bank and the Jordan Valley? And how much does this delay perhaps have to do with the concern about setting the justice here in the United States, who, of course, are a really important part of the president's Base in the election. Yeah, so I've not spoken to him about that specific issue, um, but he's a great supporter of Israel, and I would just leave it at that. But Kelly Adams says that there could be something this week, so I'm just wondering what the delay is, and maybe you could weigh in on, you know, there are concerns this could be the final nail in the coffin on a Palestinian state. Like, what is the president thinking about that? So no announcements on that front, and I won't get ahead of him on anything that would happen this week or beyond. Yes. Um, the president has said in this room that he wants to meet the Taliban leadership. Now that um, world leaders are coming here again, is that on the cards? Is that going to happen soon? Is there a timetable? So again, I won't get ahead of the president on that. Uh, what the president wants is to see um, our troops come home from Afghanistan. He has been on the record um, being against um, keeping a sustained presence in Afghanistan. Uh, he does not believe in foreign adventurism and uh, wars that drag on. He believes the ultimate way to secure our troops is to bring them home. Well, has the, uh, have the report of the, the Russian bounties to Taliban fighters uh, affected that calculus? That's well? unverified intelligence that's currently being assessed. Yamish? Hi, thanks. The first question I have is two questions. The first is, on Monday, the president went after stripping racist names on buildings. On Tuesday, he went after a rule to combat racial segregation. And then today, he said that he described the words Black Lives Matter as a symbol of hate. Why is he digging in on race in this way? So first, I mean, if you're saying that the fact that he does not want to rename um, our bases, um, if you're considering that racist, then apparently 56% of America is as well, because 56% of America is against changing the name of U.S. military bases. Um, he believes that our young men and women who left these bases overseas, many of whom lost their lives, and the last thing they saw was being on one of these military bases, that they should not be told that the base that they they trained in, the last place they saw on American soil was a racist institution. And that's a proposition the vast majority of America agrees with. Including him saying that the words Black Lives Matter, as we've noted, has been chanted in 50 states. Why is he saying that that's a symbol of hate? Uh, uh, in, on top of all the other things that he's done, just this week alone in terms of race. Well, is pigs in a blanket fry them like, like bacon racist? I mean, is that is that hateful? That is a hateful thing to say, I would argue. I, I would think the vast majority of America would agree with that, too. I think the vast majority of America would think it's hateful uh, to say that we will burn down the system, and I could be speaking literally. I think the vast majority of America would agree with him yet again that holding up a severed pig's head uh, is unacceptable. He. I have a second question. Since I did engage on that. The, the second question I, I engaged have is on that, Yamish, and I said we agree all Black Lives Matter with that sentiment, but we will not stand with an organization that exhibits that kind of hate against our police officers. The second question is, what does the president have to say to military service, the families of, of, of service members who are really afraid that their loved ones might have been killed in connection to this Russia to this Russia bounty? There are families already saying we want the United States to, to, and federal government to call us and settle us up. Kristen had an interview with, uh, with a father saying that just this week. What is this president's message to the military families in this country? So that it's unverified intelligence. It's continually being assessed. And the Department of Defense has said uh, they do not know of any Americans that have been killed in relation to this unverified intelligence that's currently being assessed. Yes, Janelle. Thank you, Gary. Uh, the president has stated in past that he will not tolerate defunding police. And he said this multiple times. Uh, considering that many Democrat-led cities have now done so, including New York City as of this morning, what does not tolerating this move look like from the president's vantage at this time? Yeah, I mean, speaking out fervently against it, um, and what it means is, you know, this executive order gives 
additional funding to police departments if they meet certain standards. We want safe policing. Uh, we want to make sure that police officers are trained to de-escalate. Um, that's why there is this supplementary funding in the EO that incentivizes and uh, rewards police departments that train their officers in de-escalation, uh, that get rid of chokeholds except when uh, there's an incident of lethal force. But look, he stands firmly with America yet again on this with 64 percent of opposing defunding the police. That's a huge number. 57 percent, according to another HuffPo YouGov poll, stand against it. And um, look, they, it, where America stands is here, where we're at a place where 64 percent of the nation are concerned that the growing criticism of America's police will lead to a shortage of police officers. That will harm all Americans. It's an untenable principle, and it's unacceptable when you have people like Representative um, Ocasio-Cortez really suggesting where the Democrat Party stands today, because taking a billion away from NYPD police officers wasn't enough for her. She wants to take it all away. She doesn't want police officers, um, and that's a really unacceptable proposition. USMCA also, it takes effect at midnight. What immediate changes is the White House hoping to uh, see immediately starting tomorrow? And then are there any elements of the USMCA that may be hindered because of uh, COVID-19? Yeah, the USMCA uh, today, that goes into effect. It's a huge deal for years, for decades. Uh, NAFTA wreaked havoc on American society, closing uh, our factories, hemorrhaging manu American manufacturing jobs. And the USMCA is a massive win. It will create 176,000 jobs, um, add $68 billion to the U.S. economy, uh, 28,000 manufacturing jobs are expected to be added, and agricultural, agricultural and food exports Sports will increase by 2.2 billion, a big win for our farmer, farmers. So we expect to see that start to take effect. Um, it's a big deal, and it's a reversal of decades of failed U.S. policy with the USMCA, the Trans-Pacific Partnership, um, horrible trade deals that betrayed America's workers. Um, under President Trump, the forgotten man and woman is forgotten no longer. Thank you, guys.